Welcome to another episode of Project 41. Today I'm going to be picking up where I left off last time with the trunk. And this is where we left off with it last time. With the chemical coating. And since then we've gotten another delivery, which I'm very excited about. I'm going to open this up and inspect it, and hopefully everything is intact. It's all the flat glass I need. I've got new glass for both windshields, both vent windows, door windows, and quarter windows. The rear window is curved, so the company that I ordered it from doesn't deal with them. It doesn't deal with it. Um, plus, it's intact. Everything is perfect. So I'm going to be removing it, cleaning it up, and tinting it, and putting it back in. And some of the other pieces are in good shape so I'll just I'll have extras I bought everything as a complete kit couldn't hurt to have extras as you can see here I'm starting my collection of air conditioning related tools I used to work in the field and uh, so not just for this project but also for picking up little side jobs here I'm starting to invest in what I need. What I've got here is oxygen and acetylene to run this torch uh, for brazing pipes together and I've also got a cutting head comes with this kit. Uh, air conditioning specific I've got uh, a leak detector, the vacuum pump and the charging manifold. Uh, whatever you put together an air conditioning system or do a repair on one that involves taking the Freon out or if the Freon had leaked out you need one of these to remove all of the air and all of the moisture from the system before you put new Freon in and I shouldn't even be calling it Freon. Freon is a registered trademark of DuPont. It's one of those things we get used to saying like Coke or Band-Aid Okay, scoff at me if you will for using these products. However, look at the condition of my trunk. I scraped it down with an orbital sander and I've coated it with the Miracle Paint, basically POR15 as I explained. It's not going to get any worse than it is now. I know that for a fact because I've used products like this on the 52. And in more than two decades, the rust never advanced. So I'm using the same methods here. And look, I've got a couple of minor little rust holes. Itty bitty sporadic holes. That's it. That's it. What you see is what there is. The rest of this is solid. So yes, I am going to use some fiberglass here with resin. And in places, I will use a little Bondo glass. Because for the rust damage that this car has, it seriously does not pay to go cutting out huge chunks of metal and having to weld and grind and etc. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go into preservation mode uh, with this part of the body. Okay, so I'm letting the uh, fiberglass patches cure up. You know, the resin and the hardener mixture and the fiberglass, they're all doing their thing, chemically bonding and <clears throat> becoming nice and rigid and watertight. And so while we're waiting on that, I think it's time to go inspect my glass shipment. I'm very happy so far, as you can see, the first layer I opened gave me my two triangular vent windows. And if you look right here, you see the curve in the front. Curve is right here. I'm going to check and see if that, sounds, if that looks right. And sure enough, yeah, I think this place did a good job for me. The color 
of the glass even looks right. I'm very excited. Okay. Without consulting my book. I got the uh, 1941 GM body book. That's upstairs though. But without consulting that or actually disassembling the interior. I do believe I do believe I have what I need. I do indeed. I think I should have my windshields, my side windows. I think it's all here. Okay, it is here. It is accounted for. What they did was they stacked it by side so that as the glass is unpacked, you get a windshield. Well, these are together on the top, but a windshield and two sides. And then the other windshield and the other two sides. And then again, these are on the top together. And yeah, I'm pretty happy. So now I have all my glass plus all my window regulators. And what I've decided to do since the door panels are finished, I mean, there's no saving the original panels. Maybe bits and pieces of you know the trim, the trim I might be able to reuse. We'll see. But all that's going to come off, and <clears throat> whatever is behind, I'm going to see what I have for access. That's part of why I got that book so I can uh, know what I'm up against before I even get started. I might wind up just cutting sections of the inner door out and then make my own out of angle iron and construct the pieces I need for uh, the window regulator, a new window track. Um, these windows are frozen in place. I have to see what I can do to bust these regulators free. Uh, door locks don't do anything. The button goes up and down, but it doesn't stop the uh, it doesn't stop anything from happening. It doesn't actually lock. Okay, so I've been killing time cleaning out the interior. You can see where the uh, project was actually left back in the day when the car wound up sitting. The base from the original seat actually still slides back and forth. I pulled the handle and it moved up. Um, so I'm pretty impressed. Although it is coming out. I need to put in a seven-way power split front bench from I'm not sure what yet a caddy or a Buick I will have to decide I'll have to comb the yard and see what I can come up with um, discovered that uh, someone had already hung more or less a brake pedal there is some sort of a rigging going on up here um, don't know if I'm going to go with that. I think I like my idea of the stock looking brake pedal. Headliner is pretty well trashed, but I was expecting that. But, you know, the insulation on top of it is mint. <laughs> go figure that. Who knows what happened. Moisture, maybe someone smoked like a chimney in it. Floor pan, just like the trunk mainly solid. Again, this is a Colorado car, so there's my glass again. I packaged it back up. And speaking of glass, look at this. Look at this. All the window regulators I have working now on the passenger side. I don't know what happened to the driver's side. It was exposed to something, but there is hope. If I can get these, especially I want these working. I don't have power attachments for those and I don't need them. I want that to be my little, one of my little hat tips to its originality is to keep the little cranks 
for the vent windows and I want them operational I really do and this gives me hope um, as you can see well as you will be able to see like Jay Leno likes to point out when you don't pay for a clock you get the little stupid thing that says I was too cheap to pay for a clock <laughs> And uh, there's the original radio, and I told you how I'm going to be making use of that space in a previous video. There's my instrument cluster. The, the rear view is in good shape, at least from this side. I'll have to, I'll have to take a look at things. I'll keep you updated, obviously, as I go along. Okay, right about now, I'm so happy. I, I could cry. <laughs> I started pulling the seats out and and found to my delight that it's backwards day. Um, the, the front seat that I was worried about because it didn't have the motorized base. It was like only good as a, uh, a solid back seat replacement. Well, I'm not so worried about that. I haven't yanked that seat out yet right there, but what I think I'm looking at are the two front motorized seats from the donor caddy, and they were thrown in the back of the car. These go in the front after they're reupholstered and after I go through the motors and make sure everything is working. That's the passenger side from the back. Has the Caddy logo even on it. Right there. There's the passenger side controls for the passenger seat. And that's what has the armrest attached to it. And unless I miss my guess, that's the power driver's front seat. So, I've got my seats that just need to be reupholstered in GM beige leather. I don't know, as long as the motors are all good, I, I can sure I can fix whatever might be wrong with them. But ah, happiness! All right, boys and girls. For as, as much as I'd like to keep going all day, unfortunately. Uh, I am a grown-ass man with grown-ass things to do, so this is going to about do it for uh, this episode of Project 41. Uh, stay tuned. Like I said in the beginning, you never know when I'll be back to bore you to tears a little more. <laughs>